Hello, hello, live from St. Clair Shores, it's Mrs. Trembley coming at you from her basement. Good times had by all on this Sunday afternoon. All right, it is time for Lesson 5-5 on translations. So first off, what is a translation? It's a kind of transformation. A transformation changes a figure into another figure, like a transformer, right? Have you seen those before? Maybe I'll bring one in class and we can all have good time and play, as long as I can get it away from my son. A new figure, or the new figure, is called the image. So you start out with one figure, and you're going to change that to something else. That new something else is the image. A translation is a transformation in which the figure slides, but it doesn't turn at all. So it just slides, no turns, no reflecting, just a slide. Every point on the figure moves the same distance and in the same direction. The original figure and its image have the same exact shape. So we didn't change the shape, we just changed where it was at, and all we're doing is sliding the, the figure here. So if you look at this example, these are some examples of translations. Here's this bike. The bike didn't change, it didn't turn at all, it just moved. It's like you're driving your bike down the street, or riding your bike, I guess you don't drive it. I don't know what the correct terminology is. But this is a slide. Are you thinking of the cha-cha slide song? Because I am, I know. And right here, this is also an example because I didn't change the position. It's still in the same exact position. Nobody fell off their bike. It just went and slid down from here. So it's almost like if you cut this out and had your finger on it, you can just move it around like this. You don't twist it or turn it. It just stays in the same position and it's moving. So the first thing I want you to be able to do is just look at an object and see, is this a translation or not? So tell whether figure A is a translation of figure B. So here's A, here's B. Does it look like I twisted or turned this? No, we just took it and we slid it over there. So this is an example of a translation. Yes, there are no turns, just slide, I guess slides. Okay, when you look at number two here, here's A and here's B. Now to get from A to B, this doesn't look like a rainbow anymore over here. It needs to still look like a rainbow if it was a translation. So this would be a no because it turns. Mm -hmm. So again, when you're dealing with translations, it's a slide, it's staying in the same exact position. It can move up, down, right, left, but you can't turn it, no turning. All right, now what I'd like you to be able to do is actually translate a figure. So here I have a triangle says translate the triangle three units right and three units down. What are the new coordinates of the image? And there's a little something about the image here. I said A and then there's this little dash up here. That's red A prime. We use prime symbols when we're naming an image. So when we want to list the coordinates of the new image, we're going to put those little prime tallies right after it. All right, so if I want to translate this shape three units right and three units down, that means that each point on this triangle is going to go three right and three down. So on a graph, all you need to do is start at A, and A, if I wanted to go three right and three down, I'm just going to hop one, two, three, and then down one, two, three, and I'm going to list my new A prime. So don't forget to put the little prime after that. All right, from B, same exact thing, here's B. If I want to go three right and three down, I'm going to go one, two, three to the right, one, two, three down, and there's our B. And here I was at for C, I want to go three right, one, two, three, and three down, one, two, three, and there's our C. And I'm going to put the little prime symbols after every single one of those so we know that this is the image. All right, I cannot seem to find my ruler down here. I'm going to do my best. Ooh, not too bad. And we can see this entire figure has been translated three units right and three units down. Now, I'm not sure if you recall doing this example. We did something similar to this in class um, where I gave you the, the movement that I wanted and we showed how you could just add or subtract from the original point. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. All right, so the original figure here, we have to look at our original ordered pairs, I think, for this to make sense. In our original triangle, I'm writing the word original up top, the ordered pairs for each point, to get to A, A is negative 2, 1. B, you have to go right 2, 
and then up five. And C, you have to go right one and up two. Now in our new one, in our image, so I'm gonna write image, I'm gonna have A prime, B prime, C prime. In our image, to get to A prime, you go right one, so that's one, and down two. And to get to B prime, you go right, one, two, three, four, five, so that's the first number in my ordered pair, and up two. And to get to our C prime, you would go right four and down one. So this is what I asked for. I asked for the coordinates of the new image. So this is answering your question. But if you didn't have a graph and I just gave you some ordered pairs and I said, I want you to go three right and three down. If you're going left or right, we're talking about the X axis, right? And down, that's talking about the Y axis. So this left right movement is our X in the ordered pair and this up down movement is our Y in the ordered pair. If you move right, that's a positive movement, right? We know that on the number line, when you move to the right, it's positive. So if I said three and it's right, I'm asking you to add three to the X. If I ask you to move three units down on the Y, when you go down on the Y axis, those are negative values. So I'd be asking you to add a negative three on the Y. And you can kind of see here, here's my original. And we know that in ordered pair, it goes X, Y, right? So when we have this x, y, if my x, if I'm supposed to go 3 right, that means I'd be adding a 3. And on my y, if I want to go 3 down, that means I would be adding a negative 3. If you take mm. negative 2 plus 3, you get 1. If you take 1 plus negative 3, you get negative 2. So you can kind of look at it that way as well. Same thing here. 2 plus 3, meaning 3 right, would be 5. 5 plus negative 3 would be 2. 1 plus 3 is 4 and 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. So again, if you didn't have that graph in front of you and I asked you to translate something 3 units right and 3 units down, you can just add 3 to the x in the coordinate pair, in the ordered pair, and you could subtract 3 or add a negative 3 to the y in the ordered pair that's given. All right, well, turn the page. A couple more examples here. This time I don't give you the uh, shape, I give you the ordered pairs though. So it says the vertices of a square are A, B, C, D. I give you those ordered pairs, and vertices are just the corners, okay? It's where the line segments meet the corners. Draw the figure and its image after a translation, four left and six up. What are the coordinates of the image? Okay, so what we're going to start with on this, because I want you to draw the figure and its image, we're going to start just by drawing the figure. So we need to plot these ordered pairs. It's supposed to be a square, so at least we know what it's supposed to look like in the end. So point A, it's 1, negative 2, and again, it's x, y. So 1, negative 2 would mean right 1, down 2. There's A. B is right 3, and then down 2. C is 3, negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then D is 1, negative 4, so right 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And thank goodness, it's a square. Awesome. Okay, now it wants you to, the example asks you to do a translation of four units left and six units up. So we're going to take each point one at a time and go four to the left, six up. So here's A, one, two, three, four to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six up. Now this is going to be A prime because that's my image. For B, I want to also do the same thing. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four to the left, and one, two, three, four, five, six up. So there's my B prime. D also, one, two, three, four left, and one, two, three, four, five, six up. D prime, and C, one, two, three, four left, one, two, three, four, five, six up. So here's our new square. And then I ask you, what are the coordinates of the image? So I'm asking you, what are the coordinates of A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So I'll list my little order pairs. Listing those out always makes me laugh. I've explained why in class, you all know. Looks like the ordered pair is sitting down. Anywho, all right, so A prime. I want to list this ordered pair. Remember it goes X, Y. So to get to A prime, we have to go left, one, two, three. That makes that a negative three. And we have to go up, one, two, three, four. 
To get to B prime, I go left, one, and up, one, two, three, four. To get to C prime, we go left one, and we go up two. And to get to D prime, we go left three, and up two. And I'm hoping that you're seeing, okay, four left, that would mean I would be adding a negative four to the x. And six up, I would be adding six to the y. And just for example, if you look at A, one, negative two, if you take A and you take the one plus negative four, you'd get negative three. And if you take the negative two plus six, you'd get four. So you could use that fact to help you see if your answer is correct, a way to double check. Okay, last one. It says, and this is just all words, there aren't any pictures. We can do this. The vertices of a triangle are, so I'm telling you the vertices of a triangle. And there's going to be three of them because the triangle has three corners. So A is negative 2, 2, B is 0, 2, and C is 3, 0. The figure is translated. So when I say translated, we know that means a slide. We know that means that there are other ways than just doing the graph to do this. It's translated one unit left and two units up. And I ask you, what are the coordinates of the image? So I'm going to list out the original ones. I think it'll be helpful. I'm going to leave space underneath it so we can put our image there as well. Okay, so I want to know the coordinates of the new image, right? And I tell you that it's translated one unit left. If it's translated one unit left, so let's see here. I do want to write original, and here I'll write image. If you translate something one unit to the left, that means I'm talking about the x-axis. Left and right is x-axis. If you go one to the left, are you adding one or are you subtracting one? On a number line, as you move to the left, it's negatives, right? So I'm going to add a negative one. And then it says two units up. Well, this vertical movement is my y. If for y, you're going two units up, that means we're adding two. So to figure out the coordinates of the image, all we need to do is add a negative 1 to the x value and add a 2 to the y value. You do that for each one. And that will give you, without having to make a graph, that'll give you the coordinates of your image. So I'm going to list this out to start. And then let's do the math. All right, so negative 2 plus negative 1, that would be a negative 3. Negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. For b, if I'm going one left, that means I'd go from zero to negative one, which would be negative one. If I'm going two up from two, that means from two to two would be four. If I'm at three and I go one left, three plus negative one is two. If I'm at zero and I go two up, zero plus two is two. And there you have it. So you can use that, this whole x, y axis, knowing which one's which and your positives and negatives to help you out if you don't have a graph. See you later, alligator.